Time to type. Raise your hand if you've ever used the type tool in Adobe Photoshop. And a lot of hands going up. Raise your hand if you've ever had the occasion to use the keyboard on your computer to type in programs like, oh, Microsoft Word, whatever. And I'm sure every hand is going to go up. This is not a typing class. I mean, I remember learning how to type when I was younger from a very stern professor, Spain, as in the country, and we'd put our fingers on the home keys and we would type, type, type. And I actually got to be pretty good at typing. This again, as I said, is not a typing class. It's how Photoshop uses type. Now I have a document open called type101.psd. It is in your exercise files. And here is the type tool over here. If you click and hold on that thing, you get four, count them, four typing tools. You get horizontal and vertical type, and you get horizontal and vertical type masks, which are kind of fun to work with. They are like making a selection out of type. Let's start with just plain old run-of-the-mill horizontal type. Now, if I come over here on the screen, and let me move this over too. I think you know this, but let's make sure. You don't have to create a layer for type. It creates it for you. So if I come over here and click, the first thing you are going to see is in the Layers panel, we now have a type layer. Very unique type of layer. The only thing that can go into that layer, obviously, is type. Now, it can be rasterized. In other words, it can be changed into a regular layer, but let's not worry about that yet. Let's type something in using whatever we have in terms of the font. And I'll start, and you can see how wonderful a typer I am. The Quick Brown Fox. You know where I'm going with this. Whoa, 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 it's not going down to the next line. Well, it's not supposed to yet. Let me back up. Press the Enter key, the Return key. The Quick Brown Fox jumped over the Lazy Dog's back. Now, to me, who took the time out of their life to try to figure out a sentence that had every letter of the alphabet in it. And there it is. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back in blue and in a font called Hobo right up here. Now, obviously, once we've got it typed in, we can do any one of a number of things to it. Let's go ahead, actually, though, and come to the word essentials. Now, you'll notice you can't get to it. A couple of things to remember about Photoshop. When it's in certain aspects, like typing, there are certain things you can't do. And the one thing that I learned the hard way, and I still do this sometimes, is if Photoshop is not doing what I want it to do, I get the feeling it's doing it just to annoy me when in fact it's something I've done wrong or I have failed to do. If we come back over here, say, to our Move tool, then we can do things like Reset. So if we Reset Essentials, that'll take the Layers panel right back there for us, let's go into the workspace called Typography. Now, we're in a different workspace, and I know we talked about workspaces, but this should kind of emphasize the fact that if you need a certain set of tools and you've got the actual workspace for it, it makes sense to use it. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff going on here. Let's go back over to our typing tool for a second, and let's just look at the tools that we have up here real quick. If I want to change the font itself, all of it, and I'm in the typing tool, it would require that I select all of my text. And I could then come up here and change it to something else, whatever I want to use. Let's go down to another one. Let me go down to something like maybe, oh, how about Lithos? Okay, I like that font a little bit better. We do have the ability to change some of the styles. And this one has regular or black, just two. But you will see in there on some fonts things like italics, bolds, condensed, etc. If the font's too big or too small, you can change the number right here. Understand that if you go to 72, that's standard in the industry in point measuring for one inch. So if you want a font that's one inch tall when you print your Photoshop document and you type the font in at 72 point, when it prints, it should be one inch. One other thing about fonts that happened in version, I believe it was version 7. I'm not talking about the future version 7. I'm talking about way back before CS, long time ago. What happened is in version 7, is Photoshop gave us the ability when we create text to print it out as vector. Before that point, it rasterized it, and that wasn't a good thing for the quality. So that's kind of nice to know, too. We have an option here for smoothing. This is anti-aliasing. 
And what it does is basically it will change how we see the text or perceive the edges of the text. In most cases, we're going to go ahead and leave that at smooth for now. And of course, we have left, centered, and right. We'll talk about that later. I'm not sure if I like blue as a color. So I can click here. And once I do that, I can come over here and it will automatically allow me to change the color. We have an option here for type warping. We'll get into that later. We have another one here for our character and paragraph panels, which we're going to get into in the next lesson. If you like what you've done to the text, all you really have to do is press your Enter key on your 10 keypad, not the Enter key in your keypad, because that'll just take you down to the next line. Don't want to do that. But if I press the Enter key on my 10 keypad, what that does is it kind of locks in the changes, gives me back my cursor, I can click again and begin typing more text. Now, if you don't have a 10 keypad and you want to get back up, say, to here, but you want to get out of it, I know a lot of people that will come over here and they'll select the Move tool, and that kind of negates the Typing tool. You don't really have to do that. Another trick, you're up here typing, but now you want another type layer. You can hold the control key down and then press the enter key on your keyboard, and that will take you out, just like pressing the enter key on the 10 keypad. So basic 101 kind of typing. Most of you guys are probably more or less familiar with this, but we will get into more detail in the upcoming lessons. On to the next.